Hey, welcome to Find the Way. I'm Mike Sherboneau, and you are? Laurel and Tyler Thompson, great to be with you again. And you know, I actually mean that we are happy to have you on the program. Thank you. Because oh. today we're talking about the power of words, mm. and one of the things that I'm gonna talk about is that you're not supposed to lie. So right. Laura Lynn, we are really glad you're here. You have brought <laughs> so much life to the show yeah. and uh, your insight Good. and your passion for Jesus just uh, flows out of you. So thank you for it being here. It is wonderful. And I know we're talking about positive words, so maybe you're just being an example right now. But Well, um, we're going to be listening to Janice Taylor later on in the yes. program and she's got some neat things to oh. say. Well, I think the folks are going to really like this because uh, social media is a place that you can bully other people, but she has a solution. And uh, apart from social media, there's just the, the give and take, the talking back and forth every day as we're talking to you. So, hey, can I ask you a question? Sure. Have you ever put your foot in your mouth and oh, regretted it? Absolutely. Many words, many times we make that mistake. Well, if you're in the habit of getting yourself into a mess because of the words you've said, or perhaps you've had words said to you that have destroyed you, that have scarred you, I hope you listen to the program today because we're going to give you God's recipe for how to speak life into situations. Hey, years ago I went to school and uh, I actually graduated, so that, that was amazing. But I remember my prof in the first year saying these words. Mm. He said, your words invite people to live or die. Wow. Don't remember anything else about the class, mm. but I remember that. And as we unpack it today, remember your words are inviting people to live or die. I'm Mike Sherbinal. We're here at Find the Way. You can check us out at findtheway.tv. I'm going to be back in just a moment with Laura Lynn. I want you to think with me today about the importance of how we speak into people's mm. lives. We can shape their lives so importantly. If you're a parent, you're gonna get that with the words you say to your children. Have you ever had somebody speak into your life or found yourself in a situation where you had to speak into someone? Well, I am thinking about uh, a friend that I met recently and uh, the self-esteem was so extremely low that uh, this person just felt like death was better. And we began to speak and I began to affirm the gifts, the callings that were so evident. The interesting thing was that nothing that this person felt was actually based on true facts or evidence, but rather their, their self-perception. But as I began to speak, the Word of God says that uh, the right words are like apples of gold in pictures of silver. One of the things that I find really neat to do, and I don't do it enough, and I wish I did, and this is gonna prompt me to do it more, is, you know, when you meet people and you see something that they do that's, that's good, regardless of whether they're a Christ follower or not or just investigating, just to speak and say, hey, I really appreciate how you do that. Yeah. Guys don't do that too often. Right. We don't brag on other people. Mm. But you know, when you do that, uh, there's a reciprocity. Yeah. Did I say that right? I, think I don't so. think I did. I don't know. There's a reciprocal Re effect. Re reciprocal. Yeah. We could edit this out. Yeah, nah. But or let, let's, be, let's be real, okay? Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. It's true what you're saying. Uh, when, when we will invest in someone else's life, there is a beautiful thing. You actually get a blessing for doing that for someone else. You speak words of life. And one of the things that we have really appreciated is the partnership with Power to Change. They come alongside of us and they provided an online mentoring. They have 1,500 mentors across Canada in eight different languages. If you go to our website today and say, I'd just like to talk to somebody about what I'm going through, there's a button there that you can click on, you'll see it. And it'll direct you to someone that you can talk to in privacy that they can help you. And they will speak words of encouragement and life into your life based on the truth of God and give you a fresh way of looking at your situation. So today we want to unpack the power of the tongue and the opportunity that we have to speak life into people's lives. We find it in the book of James chapter 3. Uh, James was the half-brother of Jesus and he said, not all of you should become teachers, my brothers, because you're going to be judged with a greater strictness. Why is that? He said, well, it's because of the way that you speak to people. Your words invite people to live or die. James goes on and he says, we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. The measure of perfection from James's perspective is not how many weights I can live, 
how I can lift or how fast I can drive my car, how much money is in the bank, but how I control my tongue. He's going to use three examples. He says our tongue, it's like um, when you control the horse by the bridle and the bit. And then he's going to go on and talk and he's saying the tongue is like the rudder of a ship, how it steers it. And then he says that in a very destructive way, the tongue can be like a little spark and can set a whole forest on fire. Think with me about the power of the tongue. Think back into history, uh, maybe 60 years ago, and what we find there is uh, Adolf Hitler. And he had a dream that the Germans would be the rulers of the world. And he raised up a great army and they began to sweep through Europe. Matter of fact, they, they knocked over cities like a tornado would knock over fence posts, almost as if they were just simply matchsticks. It was powerful. They threatened to come across the English Channel. And it was at that point that a very normal, a very mediocre political man rose up to greatness. You know the man, Winston Churchill. I have highlights of some of the things that he said to the people to inspire the, the British people. He said, we'll fight them on the beaches, we'll fight them on the streets, we'll fight them on the houses, we will never surrender. And later on, he wrote these words. He said, if this little empire lasts a thousand years, then let it be said that this was their finest hour. And it was probably the words of Winston Churchill more than anything else that motivated, that galvanized the British Empire to fight back. Who can underestimate the power of the word, the power of our tongue? And the tongue is powerful in the way that it either cuts or caresses. You know what that's like. People have spoken to you and it's just been such an encouragement. Or sometimes they'll come alongside and they'll say things that just kind of knock the legs out from underneath of you. I remember those better than I remember the, the nice things that people say. And maybe you've had that experience, Laura Lynn. You know, people come and they say something, it just kind of, blah, hits you. Sure. I remember one day in a restaurant, one guy, he had loved my preaching, and then mm. for whatever reason, he was angry at me. And he, got, he started to yell at me in the restaurant. Wow. And uh, I thought, what gives? Where's this guy coming from? Yes. Well, the Bible gives us that answer that really it's coming from the pits of hell, but we have to know how to mm. process that and how to handle it. And someone said that sticks and stones can break my bones, but names can never hurt me. And that's not true. That's not true because those words do hurt and they cause incredible pain. King Solomon wrote in the Psalms, in the book of Proverbs rather, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. And how powerful that is. The implication is that you and I have the opportunity to speak words that invite people to live or die. And we're going to talk about that more in just a few minutes. Hey, you've heard the tagline, the opportunity of a lifetime. We want to tell you about one of those right now. I'm here with Grant Seip, uh, Executive Director of One Life, One Chance, and I'm going to add in one huge opportunity. Tell me. Exactly, Mike. We want everyone to have the opportunity to come down to the Baja Peninsula of Mexico with us, with a team, build a house for a needy family, and build relationships with the people down there. It'll change your life, it'll transform your thinking of how you build community. So you're saying I can bring my friends, business colleagues, people Absolutely. like that? Bring them all. Come one, come all. Bring a bit of money. I understand for about six, seven thousand dollars you yeah. can impact a family. Come for a week. How do we find out information, Grant? I'm going to tell you how. If you click on the link at the bottom of our page today, right now on the screen, we'll uh, get you in touch with Grant right away. One life, one chance, your opportunity. Let me take a bit of a risk uh, with my teaching in the next section. I know that when I talk to guys about issues and matters, they just say, Mike, tell me what I'm supposed to do, especially when it comes to their marital relations. Now, and then oftentimes when a woman, uh, I'm talking with her, she wants to be able to think and feel her way through it. I would like to give you some very 
clear teaching on ways that we should talk. I know it's a given, we're all talking, I'm talking right now, but every one of us have an opportunity to be like the rudder on that great ship, how we're going to steer things, how we're going to change the situations or even the dynamic of the room that we walk into. What would it be like if when you become an old person and you know, you're almost about to uh, go from this life into the next, if your kids were to come to you and say, dad or mom, I just want you to know, I'm so grateful for the words of encouragement in life that you've spoken to my life. Hey, we all slip it, we all blow it. There are times I've had to regret things, but at those moments, I have learned how important it is to go back to one and sometimes all of my five daughters and say, hey girls, I blew it. Will you forgive me for what I said? One of the things that I have learned is that we all have an opportunity to speak words of encouragement. Words of encouragement go so far, and a classic example is found in the Old Testament in the life of David and Jonathan. They were best buds, and David was running for his life. He was discouraged. Uh, King Saul, who was the father of Jonathan, was actually out to kill him. And can you imagine, Jonathan comes to David in a low point of his life, and he says, David, he said, I want to encourage you. He said, you will be king. The words of encouragement were not just the nice cheery phrases saying everything is going to be okay, because things were going to be really rough for a while. But what Jonathan did was remind David of the promises of God, that God would be with him, that he would encourage him. He said, you will be king, and my father knows that. Do you have an opportunity to speak a word of encouragement into someone's life today? I want to remind you that on a daily basis, sometimes even on an hourly basis, you can text someone, you can write the old-fashioned note. You can't imagine how that's going to speak into someone's life. Maybe you've got a child who's really been struggling with school, and they come home and they have a C. You know, your look and the words you say could just devastate them, or you can say, hey, I want to encourage you. That's well done. You got a C. It could have been worse. Maybe next time it'll be a little better, but I am proud of you. Those kind of words just reinforce a child's self-esteem. I know some children, they just get paranoid if they got 98%. Folks, I'm telling you the truth. If I got a B plus, it was cause for a party. It was cause for celebration. We need to learn to speak life into people's lives. The words of encouragement are so important. Simply saying even things like thank you. Thank you for coming on time when I called you the first time. Become positive reinforcements. Words of encouragement. Who do you need to encourage today? And then there's other words. There's words of comfort. Words of comfort are things that I take out of the life of Jesus. I remember the day when he ran into Mary and Martha and their brother had died, and he said to them words of comfort because it was based on the truth of who he was. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live. Words of comfort is when you speak truth into people's lives. Maybe someone has blown it, they failed, and they wonder, can I ever press on? And you can speak to them a word from, say, out of Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, where it says, and we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is working all things for His good according to His purpose. It doesn't mean that we're to encourage wrong behavior. It doesn't mean that we're to encourage sin. But it does mean that we can give people comfort that when we walk with God, when we repent of our sins and turn to Him, there is hope. There can be a new beginning. And then there are words of perspective. I love the story in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, where a young guy named Mark deserted the apostle Paul. And Paul didn't want to take him back anymore. But later on, he would write in his epistle, he would say, and bring Mark because he is useful to me again. Mark had repented, he had changed. And Paul saw the, the, the change in his life and he, he had a new perspective on that man. As you look at situations, as you look at the people that frustrate you, whether it's your children, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your parents, try looking at them through the eyes of Jesus. I remember one old preacher said one time, he said, my wife had a friend who stayed at our home that just drove me up the wall. And I went to bed one night and I said, Lord, if you give me your thoughts for her, I'll give you mine. He said, the next morning, I was amazed at how much she had changed. Think about that one. We're going to be right back and talk more about the power of words and how you can shape your environment with what you say. Well, I 
am very excited to be uh, speaking with Janice Taylor again, and many of you may have heard uh, the first interview, which talks about a dragon in the land, and we are coming up against social media. We all know that it's infecting our children's lives, it's infecting our own, even as mothers, we are constantly on our phones, we never have our phones far. And uh, Janice, you have come up with an incredible antidote to that, and it's called Mazu. Yes. And uh, describe for me um, what is going on in the world as you see it, at that, that compelled you to create this other platform. Uh, great question. The, the biggest thing that's going on in the world is we have what's called a vortex of fear. When we enter the FANG system, and FANG is really the acronym Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. Wow. When you put those letters together, it spells FANG. Hmm. It's kind of fitting. It because is. that vortex of fear has its fangs in you. Hmm. And so when the fangs are in you, you're not living your life. No matter what pictures you post, no matter how many videos, you are going back repeatedly to check and see if you matter. And the kids are caught up in it. Everyone's yeah. caught up Everyone. in it. Like this is how we are living our external life. And we can give such a false view of what's happening in our life by just putting the right pictures up. Absolutely. And it's not even, you know, children and, and adults, it's our leaders. Mm -hmm. Our leaders say, check out our Facebook page, follow me on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You well, know, Trudeau even, he does his <laughs> everyone, selfies everyone does that he their, posts. <laughs> and so I was recently at a church and the pastor was like, follow me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I, w I was so surprised by that. I was like, you're sending all of the people to the hands of really a fear-based evil system that's not built for humans. Mm -hmm. It's built for robots. And so, you know, if we think about what's happening in our world today, that grip of fear on our society has caused massive polarization. Mm -hmm. We can't find a place to agree about anything. We are a click and a tweet away from a disagreement. And when we come out of that system, we're so activated that now we don't look at each other even for just common conversation or connection or to find a common ground or relationship. And our kids are saying, hey, look at me, look at me. And we're like, chick, 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 chick. and so yeah. it's beyond our distraction. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pulled us into a vortex of fear where we stop actually living from love. And do you think, uh, I think you described it as being high. Yes. And, and biologically, you are high in mm -hmm. those systems. It's the most acceptable form of drug right now that we have in our society. Everyone has them. We give it to babies. We give a device to each other. We have our leaders saying, come there. It's the most acceptable form. But if you look biologically at the brain, much of the brain is lit up exactly the same as a complete heroin addict. Wow. And so if you think about that, we're making decisions and choices in these spaces that affect all of our humanity because we believe the identity that we have in those spaces is real because we have a thousand people that have agreed with that identity. Wow. Even though in our heart, we may not feel that way. Hmm. So the pull of that experience creates a false self. Right. And think about when you are higher, people that have drug addictions, um, they're not making good decisions. They're not actually crafting a great life. They're kind of numbed yes. to everything. It's not a good place to be. No. And, and so what we say, even in the addiction world, you can even read Dr. Gabor Mate, he will tell you that the numb and stuffing is the root of all addiction. We want to numb and stuff our feelings. Well, what better place than having something in our pocket that I don't even have to be bored anymore. I don't yeah, even have to experience second. boredom. Yeah. That was a feeling that we had, but that boredom, that quiet, allowed us to get in touch with our true self. Mm. Now we've eliminated that. We don't even hear that voice. And you have, you have a psychology degree. Yes. And so you have got some training in how our minds work. And this is insidious. That's the word I would use. Would mm -hmm. you use that word? A hundred percent. It is the most insidious robbing of our time. And there's one piece of history that I can't help but think about, mm -hmm. but it was Homer's Odyssey. And Hoder, Homer came around an island and he noticed all these shipwreck and all these ships were there. And he's like, where did all the fishermen go? Where's all the pirates? And he goes onto the island and he finds that everyone, as soon as they get there, they're like, here, have a flower, have a flower, have a flower. And they're all eating this flower. And then he notices that some have been there for decades. And what they realize, while well, everyone was eating the lotus flower, all the ships got robbed. So whenever I see the phone go, mm -hmm. push notifications, look at this, check this, go to this, all I do is say Lotus Eater, Lotus Eater, Lotus Eater. Because oh. in many ways, we're all trapped inside a Lotus layer. 
Wow. And in the lotus layer, we believe that we're having the best life and we're the most relevant, but in truth, we're getting robbed of our time. Right, and robbed of our relationships. Yes. And how many times are we on the phone rather than with our children or our children with us or with our spouses? Yes, because now the inconvenience of our feelings, our true feelings, we can now all escape them. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that when you think about it, all of our anticipatory responses are gone. We don't anticipate a show coming up anymore because we can record it. We don't have to wait for a commercial break because we can fast forward. Or we can see it on Netflix uh, and binge watch. 24 seven. Yeah. But if you ask a person about each one of those episodes, what they actually remember about them, mm. they'll remember the first, they maybe remember the last, and nothing in between. Wow, and we've just lost all that time. Hours, and we don't process it. Right. I think your message is so powerful, it's so needed. Thank you for uh, creating this other platform. In the last minute that we have, tell me what is exciting about Mazu and why everyone who's watching this needs to go and click on your new platform, sign up, join up, and start the family on a new adventure. We need to start thinking about our lives that our real life needs to reflect our digital life. And so that our real life contains values. You and your family, it's not an all for one. Pull your family out of the vortex, nurture your children, show them, teach them how to swim in the sea of chaos, and show them normal and love. Mm. You know, this whole notion that our children should be exposed to relentless cyberbullying because that makes them tougher or more resilient is ridiculous. Our children need to be nurtured in love, and Mazu protects love, it nurtures our children, and we really create a healthy digital village so that we have a normal in a sea of chaos. Right, and it can still be so interesting because uh, you know uh, that love will draw us in, and that is a beautiful thing. I thank you for what you've done as a mother, and uh, in our family, we are gonna check that out. I thank appreciate you. you taking time to tell us that, and um, you know, if this has uh, stirred your heart, thinking we need a little bit more emotional health in our family, then check it out, mazufamily.com. Yep. That's it. All right, we'll be right back. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Sherbina with Find The Way. A couple years ago, a station manager from one of Vancouver's largest uh, radio stations spoke to me on the phone. He said to me, Mike, he said, I picture the guy driving home in his BMW from work, wondering, what is my purpose? What's my reason for living? He said to me, Mike, you have the answers. And it was out of that conversation that Find The Way began as a radio program and now as a TV program. I hope you'll check us out at findtheway.tv and learn more. Welcome back. Well, you know, Mike, I loved uh, what she had to say about being positive on social media. Oh, so helpful, so poignant. Yeah, it really is. And uh, this is a whole new idea, and so I hope that families are gonna check it out. I know that you have a powerful teaching on the word, I love James. It challenges every one of us about how powerful our tongue is. You know, as we think about the tongue, and I've been talking about certain kinds of words that we give, one of the words is the word of exhortation. If you're not in the church, this might not make a lot of sense to you, but for those of you who have had an experience with the church, sometimes people say, well, I want to exhort you. And an exhortation is a strong word. It's a word that brings correction. But Laura Lynn, many times I've seen people who come around and they say, I have the, the gift of exhortation. Mm -hmm. They're able to set people straight, but really what they're doing is they got a license to fire a shotgun, and oh, maybe they don't even have a shotgun. In a mean way, you're Yeah, and about. so and I want to say to you that if you feel you need to exhort people and you always have this drive to set people straight, I'd say back off. Because what I tell people, if you're going to blast somebody for what they're doing, will you be there to pick them up? and to help them to walk again. Because that's what we see in Jesus. He spoke truth, absolutely. He confronted people, but he was there to point them and say, this is the way, start walking in it. And so uh, often in the church, people get hurt because somebody shoots their mouth off and they're never there to say sorry or to apologize. So words of exhortation are important. And Paul wrote, he said, I urge you brothers by the mercies of God to present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. That's his word of exhortation to start living that way. But you know, there's other words that we use and um, it is the power uh, of the tongue to not only caress, but to cut. And if anything cuts, it's, it's gossip. 
You know, Proverbs says that gossip betrays a confidence, and a confidence separates close friends. Listen to Proverbs 18, verse 8. It says, words of a gossip are like choice morsels. But hey, in Proverbs 26, verse 20, it says, without gossip, a quarrel will die down. Have you ever thought what would happen if you didn't say something negative about a person? You know, so often we want to mm -hmm. just paint a little darker color on somebody, don't we? Sure, well, people give us that opportunity. But uh, when we are walking with the fruit of the Spirit, it's, uh, it's about being kind. It's about being careful with what we say. Yeah, and I don't like it when people gossip about me, and I know God hasn't liked it if I've dropped a, a word that has been less than positive about somebody. Better to go and speak to them than speak truth. I saw uh, a long time ago, they fished a lady out of the canal. She seemed to be a homeless person. She left no identification on her, and obviously she was dead. And when they, when they drew her out of the canal, they were looking for some way to determine who she was. And all they found in one of the pockets was a piece of paper with two words on it. And the two words said, they said, they said. I wonder what it was mm. that they said that wow. caused this woman to take her life. Mm. And you know, as Janice has been talking, we've seen such uh, of the power of social media. Kids have taken their life because of Facebook rants and sure. posts. And I just applaud Janice for what she's doing yes. because she's addressing Mm. what they said. There's never a, a more serious time in history when words, even written words, can be put out there and blasted far and wide for the world to see. And that is harmful. That is very harmful to people. And you know, uh, in this day and age, uh, you being a pastor, I'm sure you've had this, uh, it's so easy to just sit back on your couch and go, well, I didn't really like the way he put that and blast off something, not even considering the feelings, because you think the pastor's so strong or tough, you know? Yeah. Not and we just, we, just want to, we take people out. Yeah. But hey, let's end on a real positive note because all of us have opportunity to speak words that give life. And, and especially as I think about giving life, I love to be around people who laugh. Yes. And who can tell a clean joke, a good joke, but just see the funny side of life. And by the way, you have broccoli in your teeth. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I knew it. I could feel it. Thanks, <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Proverbs 17, verse 22 says, A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I'm going to get you back for that. At least I can say reciprocity. Reciprocity. That was it. Okay, but can you spell it? Hey. Okay. We're pretty really glad know. you're watching Find the Way. Uh, I'm Mike Sherbino, and you are? I'm Laura Lynn Tyler Thompson. I've had a great day. And thank you for being with us. Thank and you. as we journey on, remember your words invite people to live or to die. And so, why not invite today? The, the giver of life, the Lord Jesus, to be your leader and Lord, to say, God, will you start to live through me, love through me, and speak through me words that bring hope and life to people. Hmm.